morning, everyone. I'm Stuart Haskin, Sergeant Major at Basingstoke, and welcome to worship with us today. Uh, it's Mother's Day, and we will be taking time to pay tribute and recognise the role that mothers have played in the lives of so many of us. Um, but we also are going to have a bit of a time of praise. Uh, so the meeting is going to be in two halves, a uh, tribute to our mothers, and then a uh, opportunity to listen to some good music and to sing along with some good songs. The um, internet is awash with extremely high quality music produced by the Salvation Army. In particular, one of my favourite uh, YouTube subscription channels is that of the New York Staff Band, and they've put some really good material up in the last 12 months under the leadership of their bandmaster, Derek Lance, and we're going to be relying on that quite heavily this morning. And to start with, we're going to reflect on the words of Psalm 66, which in the Living Bible says, Sing to the Lord, all the earth, sing of his glorious name. Tell the world how wonderful he is. And there is a piece of music which has been arranged by William Gordon called Make His Praise Glorious. And we're going to listen to the New York Staff Band under the bandmastership of Derek Grants play that piece now as a start to our worship this morning. Hope you enjoy it. Thank you. 
Well, that was a very energising start to our service, and I hope you are energised enough to sing along with our next one, which is a song from the songbook, Salvation Army songbook number 358, Crown Him With Many Crowns. We're using a very lively arrangement featuring Robert Venables on cornet, accompanied by Rhonda on the piano. So this is Crown Him With Many Crowns, and please join in and have a good sing. Hope you had a good sing. In the words of song 328 in the Salvation Army songbook, we read these very simple words. To be like Jesus, this hope possesses me. In every thought and deed, this is my aim, my creed. To be like Jesus, this hope possesses me. His spirit's helping me, like him I'll be. It's now an opportunity to meditate, um, to take time to reflect on how much like Jesus we are and how much more we could be like him. We're going to use an arrangement of the tune To Be Like Jesus, a composition based on it by Dorothy Yates, and she's going to accompany Brindley Venables playing on the cornet. There's some meditative music for the first half or so of the piece, and then an opportunity to sing along with the words of song 328, chorus 328. So please take time to reflect and then join in at the appropriate time to sing. Brindley Venables and Dorothy Yates with To Be Like Jesus.
hope that was useful reflective time for you all. We're going to switch gears now and to think about mothers on this Mothering Sunday. The next three items, are, I'm not going to interrupt them. Um, I'm going to let you know what's going to happen and just let them flow. Uh, first, we have a very light-hearted look uh, for a song at Helping Mum on Mother's Day and how well or otherwise that can go. Then there's a more serious song uh, entitled More Than Enough, the words and music by Shauna Edwards. And then finally, uh, to round off our Mother's Day reflections, there is a Bible message and a talk from Major Rhonda Harmon, who is from the St. Catherine Citadel Corps in Ontario, Canada. And you will find it useful, uh, if you have your Bibles, to be ready to turn to the second book of Samuel 22. Second book of Samuel, chapter 22. So a light-hearted song, a more serious song, and then a message from Major Rhonda Harmon from Canada. Every day you keep me safe and warm and loved and fed But today's your special day, it was my turn instead So I got up at 5 a.m., I've been working hard since then Some things I didn't get quite right, next year I'll try again Just for you I did my best to cut my own hair Some places came out pretty good and some are kind of bare I washed all your nicest clothes but the washer wasn't free so I use the dishwasher, pretty smart of me. Remember no one's perfect, every kid has faults. Remember it's the thought that counts more than the results. My heart was in the right place even though I did it wrong. It was all to say on Mother's Day my love for you is strong. I vacuumed really quietly, I didn't use the power. I cleaned your dirty iPad screen, I held it in the shower I painted all the ceilings, it was easy with the mop Now the carpet's painted too with cool rainbow drops I answered all your work emails with just leave me alone And we gave a prince from Scandinavia a loan I watered all the houseplants with the garden hose I forgot to turn it off, sometimes that's how it goes Remember no one's perfect, every kid has faults Remember it's the thought that counts more than the results My heart was in the right place even though I did it wrong It was all to say on Mother's Day my love for you is strong Your car shiny inside and out with lots of olive oil Who knew that oatmeal splatters up so high and far on boil I tried to make you orange juice but I spilled it on the floor I tried to fry you bacon, we don't have a stove no more Since you can't really cook this week, I called the pizza place I emptied out the fridge and freezer so there's enough space They should be here any time, two dozen pizza pies I paid with your credit card, I hope that you're surprised Remember no one's perfect Every kid has faults Remember it's the thought that counts More than the results My heart was in the right place Even though I did it wrong It was all to say on Mother's Day My love for you is strong My heart was in the right place Even though I did it wrong It was all to say on Mother's Day My love for you is strong It was all to say on Mother's Day My love for you is strong
you're teaching me. Someday I'll have a home, a family, and I'll love them just as much as you love me. Then maybe you'll finally see you have given enough for me, a gift that will last through eternity. Good morning, everybody. I'm coming to you today from my office this morning on this beautiful Mother's Day. I wanted to share God's Word with you this morning and really chat with you. Um, it's not going to be a normal Sunday scripture taken from usually from Proverbs 31. As most of you know, I'm an Old Testament person, and so I wanted to come and speak with you today, taken from 2 Samuel chapter 22. So if you have your Bibles, open them up. And we'll get into God's Word in just a moment. If you notice behind me, I have a quilt. Many of you have seen my quilt. Many of you have heard me talk about my quilt, my hard rock quilt. And it's actually a compilation of lots of travels and lots of adventures that I've had throughout the years. My adventures as well as my parents' adventures. And it was created in a turning point in my life. Um, a time when I was sorting things out, when I was cleaning out some things, um, moving on, and a time of healing. I created it with my mother, and she helped me pick out the patterns of the, the fabric. She helped me with figuring out how exactly do you make a t-shirt into something that you can stitch and sew. So we worked on it together through this time, and it was just a good time. And so on this Mother's Day, I thought I'd share a little bit of this with you. Now, when you think about your life, many of us have these defining times in our lives. Some of us have them when we're younger. Some of them have when we're older. And even some of us have them when we're repeating different times. As we mature in our Christian faith, we go through these very defining moments um, maybe there's some sorting out that's going on during these days. Uh, we have time to think. We have time to uh, clean. We have time to physically clean our house in, in these days that we have. Many of us are at home, so we have time to physically clean our homes. But we also have that time to spiritually clean our homes. We have that time to really dive into God's Word and really get to know Him and, and what He wants for our lives. But this time we also have a time for healing, uh, a time for healing emotionally in our hearts 
and a time to maybe even heal physically. Maybe some of us have, have been sick or a little bit under the weather. And so we have some time right now. Now, when I look back at my life and the adventures that I've had with, um, my, with my hard rock quilt, my vision now is 2020 as I look back. When I, when I look through my quilt and I look at the London quilt, I think, gosh, I can look back and see God working um, through my days and my times in London. When I look at the Sydney block, I can look at him and say, I can see now God's hand in my life when I spent some time in Sydney. I can point to Jesus now in my life. Maybe back then, when I was going through these adventures in these times, I might not have been able to point directly to God because things were a little muddy. Things were a little unclear during those times. But when I look at 2 Samuel 22, if you have your Bibles, I would encourage you to open up. This is David's song of thanksgiving. And this is written after he's gone through tons of, of land battles He's gone through relationship issues. We all know those stories. Don't need to mention them here. He's gone through some family drama. And I think most of us, especially if we have large families, we've got some family drama that we can, we can remember and, and think about. Some good, maybe not some so great. Um, David here has gone through some, um, very much some heartache, a brokenheartedness, maybe at times. And I'm sure he's questioned why throughout his, his time. And so when we come back to these verses in 2 Samuel 22, we can see what he says in verse 2. He says, The Lord is my rock, my fortress, and my deliverer, my God, my rock, in whom I take refuge, my shield and the horn of my salvation, my stronghold, my refuge, my Savior. That's who he believes God is today. And I think it's amazing that he can write about that and give thanks to the Lord at the end during these days. Now, we know a lot about King David. We know a lot about his, his life. He basically grew up in the scriptures of the Old Testament, right? His life is spelled out for us. We know about his humble beginnings when he was the youngest in his family. He was the one taking care of sheep out, out in the fields. He was also one who was very obedient. Um, 1 Samuel 16, he came when he called, he played his lyre when he was asked, he was confident also in the Lord. We see that in 1 Samuel 17, when he went to go battle against Goliath, when nobody else would. He was confident that the Lord was going to guide him and protect him. So we see that as well. We also see him as a faithful friend to his best mate, Jonathan. And so we see that written out in the scriptures for us. And, and now that King David is, is getting towards the end of his life, he's seen a lot, he's experienced a lot, and he looks back on his life, and it's very clear to him where God has led him. It's very clear where he has seen God's hand moving in his life. But it's also very clear where maybe David led his life and maybe went a little sideways and didn't really follow God's commands. God was always at the helm throughout David's life. He was always guiding and he was always allowing things to happen. And, and God is present throughout. And therefore, David is able to recognize him, to recognize God as his rock, his stronghold his deliverer, his shield, and his savior. Second Samuel 22 it is quite a long song, if you've ever read that. And it very much recaps David's life. I'm sure if you take the time later today or sometime throughout the week and, and you read through it, you'll be able to see that not only David's story, but you might be able to see a little bit of your life story in David's praise and his song of thanksgiving to God. In these days that we're facing right now, some of us have time to think. Our life has slowed down a little bit. We have time to ponder. We have time to chat with family. We have time to chat with friends. And some of us wonder if our life is going to be okay. 
Will our family remain healthy? Will our family come on the, out, on the other side of this just fine? These days, for many of us, are very unclear. We don't have that 2020 vision. There isn't that available because we don't know what's going to happen. We have, I would encourage you to take that time to ponder, to just think about what your life has been like and see if you can point to where God is moving in your life. Where can you point exactly to see and say, God was moving in my life at this time. Maybe even draw it down, write it down. Start a little journal with a piece of paper you might have handy. Write those things down and give some praise to God and thanksgiving to him for having God see you through. I would encourage you during these days to truly focus on God. He is unchanging. He is our constant rock through these times and through these days. I'll read it to you again from 2 Samuel. The Lord is my rock, my fortress, and my deliverer. My God, my rock in whom I take refuge, my shield and the horn of my salvation, my stronghold and my refuge, my Savior. This quilt that I created with my mother years ago um, was quite a journey in itself. Uh, it's not perfect. It's got a lot of crooked edges on it and maybe not some straight stitching that I've done. But it's something that reminds me daily when I come into my office and where God has guided me and protected me throughout these days. And I can firmly say that on Christ, the solid rock, I do stand. Now on this Mother's Day, we want to salute and recognize all those women in our lives who have helped us become who we are today. Whether you're a mom, a grandmother, an aunt, a sister, a, a cousin even. Those women who have spoken into our lives and helped all of us become who we are today. We salute you today and we say thank you. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your guiding hand. We appreciate you and we want to recognize you today. Thank you for walking with us. Thank you for teaching us. Thank you for loving us even through all the ups and the downs. So as you take some time this week to look at 2 Samuel chapter 22, I pray and I hope that you can see God through your life and you can give him all the praise and all the glory that is due him. I'd like to wish you each and every one a happy Mother's Day. May you remember your mother in your heart as she is gone. May you be thankful for her, for what she has brought you through and what she has carried you through, what she's taught you. And if you are a mom yourself, I hope that you will remain strong in the Lord and in your faith and be allow God to be your rock. May he be your glory. May he be your power and praise this morning. Amen. God bless you all. I hope you felt that was a worthwhile tribute to mothers, indeed, all women who have an influence on the lives of so many. Uh, and perhaps as we were, I don't know about you, but as I was watching uh, the scenes of life unfold, particularly in the second song, I was reminded of the faithfulness of God in whatever situations and whatever stage of life we or our families are at. Obviously, some of us no longer have our mothers and we're reflecting, perhaps with a tinge of sadness today, on the influence they had on our lives. Um, but uh, nevertheless, we do recognise the role of all women uh, in that. And indeed, the faithfulness of God that, frankly, so many of us sure saw highlighted in our mothers. We're going to sing again now, um, or an opportunity to sing along with a musical arrangement to the great song of Great Is Thy Faithfulness, songbook number 26. This particular arrangement was composed by Bill Himes. It's played once again by Brindley Venables, this time accompanied by Derek Vance and by Dorothy Yates on piano. So song 26, Great Is Thy Faithfulness. And perhaps again, we can think of the faithfulness of ourselves or God to us during our lives, but particularly that faith that was shown to so many of us by mothers and other female influences on our life.
Hello everyone, here are the announcements. Immediately after this service, you're invited to join us for Coffee Fellowship on the normal Zoom number and everyone's invited. There's no Sunday school this afternoon, but at eight o'clock there is a youth cell activity for those aged 12 to 16 on the Zoom number shown. That's at eight o'clock. Wednesday morning, coffee stop at 11.30 on the normal Zoom number. And on Wednesday evening, there is a prayer fellowship at 7.30, again on the normal Wednesday night Zoom number. Tai Chi on uh, Thursday evening at 6.45, normal Zoom number, normal password and normal arrangement that you should please let Marie know if you plan to attend. Her number is in the grapevine. Next Sunday is uh, back to Lieutenant Rob. He's back from his furlough and he will be leading our worship, which will include uh, our altar service, or at least an appeal for our altar service. The uh, mechanism for uh, donating will be, of course, not physical. Um, and Rob will be speaking on Scandalous Love, the next in the series, and this week it will be Burning Love, available on the normal platforms of the Sermon.net web application, uh, Facebook and YouTube. Next Sunday af after that, there'll be Coffee Fellowship, Sunday School will resume at 3.30 and Youth Fellowship next week will be for the 17 plus age group on their meeting number. We continue to thank you for prayers for all those who need it. Um, not uh, too much to be uh, specific about this week, but we do continue to ask for your prayers for all of our core family and those they are concerned about. May God bless you. Thank you.
That was Praise Him by Stephen Buller. And uh, one way in which we can praise God and uh, extend the knowledge of him to those who perhaps don't know him is through testimony. And we're going to give our testimony now in a corporate song. It's uh, song 843 in the songbook. The verse says, I know not why God's wondrous grace to me he hath made known, nor why unworthy of such grace he claimed me for his own. And in testimony, we say, but I know whom I have believed and am persuaded that he is able to keep that which I've committed unto him against that day. I know not why God's wondrous grace to me he hath made known. Uh, an arrangement by the, again, the New York staff band in a slightly earlier iteration than we've been using up to now. But nevertheless, it'll be a great uh, song to sing along with. So uh, please join in. If I could understand the hidden mysteries of life. So begins the song Love Never Fails and the Gowans and Nasa musical spirit. Well, if the last year or so has taught us anything, it is that whilst we may have great scientists who can gradually but not completely unravel the workings of a virus so small that I'm told that all the coronavirus in the world will fit into a drinking glass. If we put that alongside the vastness of the universe, then the hope to understand the hidden mysteries of life is totally out of our grasp. That just underlines the fact that there is so much we don't know. And so the later line in the song, which says, even if I knew all that, I would know nothing, becomes very meaningful indeed. And the same applies to wealth as it does to knowledge. 
goes on to say that nothing compares with knowing the love of God and indeed the need for us to possess and share that love with others. All that we do, singing, social concerns, preaching, is for nothing unless we have the love of God in our hearts. It reflects the words of the scripture, of course, from 1 Corinthians 13, verses 1 to 8, from the chapter often called the love chapter. Words so well known, but always worth repeating, which say, If I speak in the tongues of men or of angels, but do not have love, I am only a resounding gong or a clanging cymbal. If I have the gift of prophecy and can fathom all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have a faith that can move mountains, but do not have love, I am nothing. If I give all I possess to the poor and give over my body to hardship that I may boast, but do not have love, I gain nothing. Love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. It doesn't dishonour others. It's not self-seeking. It's not easily angered. And it keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. Love never fails. Love cannot fail. The title of the song that you are about to hear. Thank you. 
So in those last two items, um, we've really been reminded of the things we don't understand. Um, and that leads us to find those things that we know to be true and to rely on and those things that are ever faithful as we have been singing. So bringing these uh, maybe somewhat random items together as we conclude our service this morning, we're going to sing together song 662 in the Salvation Army songbook. Uh, it was referenced in the talk by Major Rhonda about Mother's Day, uh, and it ties in with the fact that we've talked about how great and how faithful God is. We've mentioned the things we don't understand. We thank Cliff Matthews from the Staff Songsters for reminding us that if anything has made us aware of the things that we don't understand, then this past 12 months or so have. Um, but we're reminded that there are things that are indeed true. And so we can sing in our final song, my hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly lean on Jesus' name. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand. benediction. O Father, let thy love remain. O Son, may I thy likeness gain. O Spirit, stay to comfort me. O triune God, praise be to thee. May God bless you. Uh, we're going to have one more, well, actually we're going to have two more items from the New York Staff Band. One I'm taking a bit of a risk on. So first of all, we're going to listen to Bruce Broughton's March Hillcrest, which uh, has got a bit of the Dallas sound about it and the big movie sound. So I hope you'll enjoy that. And then if you want to stick around a little bit longer before you go and get your coffee or your Sunday lunch, um, then I don't know about you, but I'm looking forward to going to places in the not too distant future. And one of the places I used to go to a lot and probably have taken for granted because I miss it now is New York. And so because we've been relying on the New York staff band to uh, help us through our service so much this morning, um, after the playing of Hillcrest, 
There's also a rendition of New York, New York. There is absolutely zero religious basis for me including it. So if you uh, don't want to listen, then don't. And if you want to enjoy it, then stick around. May God bless you.
every day a day of care with heavy burdens pressing. Needing strength to battle on, yet you find it bled and gone. Don't despair.